Hey, this is Sasha, and thanks for joining me here for another quick little vlog and insights. What I'd like to do today is just share with you some thoughts about Bitcoin and my thoughts as far as investing in it goes. I've had a lot of questions, comments about investing in Bitcoin. Sasha, hey, did you invest in Bitcoin? You should invest in Bitcoin. Grab some Bitcoins. You know, there's a lot of things that you can invest your money in. And, you know, back when I started investing in the stock market, it wasn't an investment that I really knew that much about. And I had to really learn. And the reason I chose the market instead of more on real estate or classic cars or coins or you look at rare stamps is because I knew that that business would be around for a while. And also I wanted to see how businesses evolved. I was attracted to businesses and I knew that business would really have some staying power. Not to mention you could do it from anywhere. If you go ahead and invest in real estate, for example, you can't really do it from anywhere. So it had its pros and cons. But really, the thing for me was the longevity. I knew that it had time, and if I learned how to do it, that's really where the big boys played. That's really where the big investing happened. It was quick turnaround in terms of you could get in and out of your trades fairly quick, or you could also uh, liquidate a large amount of stock fairly quickly, and it was also regulated. When you start looking at cryptocurrencies, when you start looking at Bitcoin or many of the other currencies out there, they're a lot less regulated and it's not an investment that I really know. Do I have people that I know and have heard about investing in rare stamps? Yes. How about in rare paintings? Yes. I could have invested in a rare painting, bought it for 13,000, sold it for $450 million. Yes, it could have happened, but it didn't happen because it wasn't an investment I was interested in. It wasn't an investment that I knew that much about, and it wasn't the opportunity that presented itself. Remember that opportunity presents itself when you have the experience, and that's when you can capitalize on things. There's opportunities everywhere. You could go ahead and start your own business. You could go ahead and buy an expensive painting. You could go ahead and invest in wine or start your own business. And of course, now you have digital currency. But for me, do I invest in it? No, because I don't know and understand the business well enough. And I don't know it well enough to the point of uh, in putting a lot, large portion of my money. Could I go ahead and put $1,000, $10,000, $20,000 in it and say, hey, let's see what happens? Yes, I could do that, but now we get into speculation. And that's the thing is, is where do you draw the line between speculating on something and investing in something? When I look at stocks and my investments, I know that my return and success of probability is let's say 10 out of 12 months or 11 out of 12 months. Or even if I have a lot of losing trades in one month, I know that more than likely I'll make it up on other trades in the future because I could hop around and go into other areas. When it comes to digital currencies, I don't know that. I don't know, I don't have the track history that I can say, hey, this has uh, a potential for me to make uh, money 11 out of 12 months, or this has a potential for me to have a 60% return on my investment over the next, whatever, five years, three years. You could take a chance, but from my perspective, uh, taking chances when it comes to investing is just speculating, or it gets into the point of gambling, and now the risk to reward becomes less favorable. And when it comes to trading in the market or investing, you always want a better reward than the risk that you have. Now, back when I used to do martial arts much more so, there was a gentleman that actually invested in real physical coins. And I started researching this because it was around the same time that I got interested in the market as well. I was a lot younger and was attracted to the financial side of things. And it attracted me because he was driving around a Ferrari. So when you see this person's car, and I saw the person's car and driving it, and then you see him walk in, he's trying to work out and get rid of the stress there. And then you see um, you know, all the social media accounts there that he has, and it was legitimate. You know, I see him pulling up with a Ferrari, and the stress that he had, he had to come in to work out to get rid of that stress. So dealing in that industry, in that business, he knew what he was doing. He knew what came about with it. He knew the risks associated with it. Was I ready for that? No, it wasn't a business that I knew much about. And if you look at some of these rare coins, actually, and we start taking a look at some of these. So let's look at uh, right here, you have uh, Coin Explorer. 
And when you start evaluating this, you can see that this seated Liberty dollar, 1870, um, really as you start scrolling down, and again, I don't know much about this, but as you start looking through some of the sheets and some of the things that have been selling, well, you could see here on the price point here was right around 805,000. There's one for $470,000 for a coin or a block of coins or something to that effect. So again, it's not an investment that I know much about, but it's definitely one that some people know quite a bit about. So for you, as you start looking at trades, investments, and uh, getting into things, you kind of have to start wondering, okay, well, do you really want to go into these things when you don't understand how the business works? And if you take a look here at this uh, cryptocurrency world coin index, and you start evaluating some of these things like a Bitcoin, yeah, and it continues to do quite well. And if you look at the chart over the last uh, little bit, of course, it's doing fantastic and phenomenal. But remember that everything has a pullback in marketplaces. It doesn't matter where you're at. The question is, is when? So are you gonna be getting in it right now and taking it off when it's 25,000, 35,000? You don't know if it's gonna run for another five years, 10 years, 15 years, and then crash. It could be one year and crash. You don't really know. But the thing is, is how do you make money from it rather than just a one-time thing? And now there's digital currencies popping up all over the place. So here you have Ethereum, Ripple, Bitcoin, Cash, Litecoin. They're, they're everywhere. You could do Litecoin here as well and put your money into that. And it's all these currencies that continue to skyrocket and the charts look impressive. But as you know, in the marketplace, not everything will go up uh, all the time. So you need to make sure that you're capitalizing and watching based on your risk. You're watching your risk to reward. So when you start looking into this, you know, a lot of people that want to make a lot of money, they do it in two different ways. The first way is you want your thing to come in. Your ship comes in. You're looking for a one-time occurrence a one-time stock, a one-time whatever, investment, a Bitcoin. It could be, hey, a ruby deal, a diamond deal. It could be, hey, I'm gonna invest in this painting and I'm gonna sell it in 10 years. It's gonna go up millions of dollars. They're looking for a one-time payout, the lottery effect, the lottery mindset. And if you have this kind of mindset, it's not really a good mindset to have because you're not building anything. You're not building a skill set. You're looking for a one-time occurrence uh, due to hype, due to whatever. So that's the lottery mindset. The other approach is people who build assets, who build their skill sets, their education, who learn to understand the risks, the risk management, the risk to reward concepts. And when you do that, you're able to trade. You're able to trade effectively. If you do that in business, well, in business, if you build assets like Let's say you're building your connections, you're learning about marketing, you're building your product pipelines. Well, now you're building things within your business rather than, hey, let me make one product and I'm going to make millions of dollars from that. That's not how a business operates. A business operates on building multiple products, iPhone 3, uh, 3GS, iPhone 4, iPhone 5 iPad, Mac, Book Pro, they continue to build more and more products. And that's what you need to start thinking about is as you're trading, investing, looking at things, how well do you know and understand the investment? How well do you think you can profit on this on a consistent basis? If you're looking for a one-time occurrence and one-time event, yeah, you can do that. You might become very rich and I'm happy for you if you do, but that's just speculation and you may get lucky and more power to you if you do, and you might have a great life ahead of you. But for the majority of people, it's not gonna work out that way. That's just not the way that wealth is built. It's not the way that riches are built. It all comes down to building a solid foundation, building out your assets, whether that's your skill sets, your own personal mindsets, building out all the tools that you need to do to make things work in the marketplace or in your personal life. So anyways, that's kind of my thoughts as far as Bitcoin goes and Bitcoin investing is, can you invest in it? Yeah, but it's more along the lines of speculation. 
Can you become rich from it? Absolutely. How long will the run last? You never know. It just depends how many more people pile on. Can it crash? Yeah, it could crash anytime. You never know. And the same thing goes with the market. It could pull back anytime. But where can you be more consistent? What has longevity? What has staying power? That's typically what I look at for my investments, for my future growth on my money. And I'd rather be a little more safer than risky. Again, matter of risk to reward ratio and risk profile, risk tolerance. If you love jumping out of airplanes, you love a little more risky investments with your money, and you just want to throw $1,000 and see what happens to Bitcoin, and maybe you'll triple your money. 1000 goes to 3000 But would I really take a million dollars and put it in there, and then maybe it'll go to $3 million? Yeah, that's great, but I wouldn't do it with 90% of my money. If you had $50 million, $100 million, and you're doing $1 million, and you're putting it in Bitcoin, again, same thing like for the average person, maybe throwing in a couple hundred dollars, $500 or $1,000 into Bitcoin and then seeing what happens. But that's not normally how wealth is built. If you're looking for that one-time effect, it may happen to you, but chances are that's just not the way it works. So in either case, if you are trading and investing in Bitcoin, remember, always take profits into strength, just like you would within the marketplace, trading stocks or anything else. Rare coins, stamps, uh, gold, uh, framed art, doesn't matter what it is. All things come back eventually in terms of prices. They fluctuate. That's what investments are all about. But if you want to enjoy um, you know, owning material pieces like framed art and you just want to hang it and it costs you $100 million, then of course you could do that. But as far as investing goes, remember you're looking for appreciation and investments that you know about, investments that you have experience about. And you want to take those things slow and build it accordingly. Don't want to dump all your money in there because if they come back, if things crash, if there's issues, it can really hurt you financially. Anyways, thanks for sticking with me. In either case, uh, enjoy the rest of the day ahead and the weekend. And remember, subscribe and get on the newsletter list if you're not on it already for other announcements. I'll see you next time.